There are escalating tensions with China. As you know, President Trump issued executive orders last night on Chinese apps, TikTok and WeChat. The orders ban US, any, any U.S. transactions with the parent companies, ByteDance and Tencent. It will go into effect in 45 days. Joining me right now is the Undersecretary of State for Economic Growth, Energy and the Environment, Keith Crock. And Keith, it is great to see you this morning. Secretary, thank you so much for being here. Great to be here, Maria. Thanks for having me back. Walk, be, walk us through some of these threats and why TikTok and WeChat uh, are, are making Americans vulnerable. Give us the backdrop. Sure. So, Maria, the first thing is it's not just about two companies. Uh, it's about uh, the CCP's, the, the Chinese Communist Party's surveillance state. And this is an extension of that. Uh, you've talked a, a lot about Huawei on, on your show. And if you look at it, Huawei is the backbone to this surveillance state. Uh, and then there's all these different appendages, uh, and like WeChat, like TikTok. Uh, and uh, Secretary Pompeo announced this uh, on Wednesday in terms of the clean network. And the clean network is the administration's comprehensive approach to uh, protecting data privacy, security, uh, it also deals with uh, human rights and, and collaborative, um, uh, uh, you know, from an economic standpoint. So th this is all about that. And, and, and if you look at uh, what, what the Communist Party has been doing, they've been collecting our citizens' data. And these are two big sources of that. Yeah. I, I've, been, I've been writing about this in my upcoming book, Keith, and I've got a list in front of me um, from the book research of literally 25 arrests just in 2020, uh, whether it be Chinese hackers working to steal COVID-19 uh, research or Charles Lieber from Harvard running the, the, the chemistry department there and also taking money from the CCP. Arkansas, uh, Harvard, uh, Cleveland Clinic, the list goes on. How are we going to stop this? I mean, clearly when the president for three years went back and forth with Chinese officials about getting a phase one trade deal done, the intellectual property theft was the one thing that the Chinese government said, no, we're not going to stop. We're not even admitting that we're doing it. So what's the long term plan here in terms of getting the CCP to stop stealing intellectual property as 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 a goal for growth. I mean, this is their strategy for goal for growth theft. You know, you're absolutely right that they are uh, stealing an intellectual property at massive scale. And as you know, I've spent 30 years in Silicon Valley. It's the reason why I came uh, to the government, because I had a chance to experience it firsthand. And now being here, I see that they're doing it absolutely on a massive scale. So one of these things, uh, uh, one of the core strategies is the clean networks, because with, with that, it, and, and you heard uh, Secretary Pompeo announce that, uh, and the launch of five new uh, clean initiatives. So it's clean, clean carrier, clean cloud, clean store, clean app, and also clean cable, undersea cables, where they collect at hyper, at hyper scale. So I think it's it's a combination of protecting uh, ourselves on that on that digital front and, and also bringing along our allies. Uh, and as Secretary Pompeo said, yeah. an alliance of democracies on that. So that's that's a key part of it, because if, if, if you look at the way they capture information, it's just not Huawei. It's the entire system. Uh, and, and then in terms of yeah. the infiltration uh, by uh, you know, the Thousand Talents program, all those things that you've talked about on your show. We really need to be vigilant. And you're right. I mean, they're in our healthcare system. They're in our universities. And I think the first step is really to, to wake up the American citizens. And President Trump has done that. And now citizens all over the world are waking up to this malign yeah. regime. And they see that the pandemic is a result of the concealment of the virus. They see Hong Kong's freedoms being totally eviscerated. Uh, and they see the human right. rights abuse in Xinjiang. And, and it's given the political will to government leaders and corporate CEOs all around the world. So, uh, 
you know, Peter Navarro made a really interesting comment last week when I spoke with him, and he said, look, the Chinese are gathering all this information, and they could use it as blackmail. They could try blackmailing people. So I, wanna, I want you to speak to this influencing going on right now from the CCP on government officials. Because as I understand it, based on my original reporting, the CCP right now is trying to influence members of Congress. Is that true? Well, by the way, they're trying to influence everybody. And if you look at the Communist Party's doctrine, it is seduce with money and reinforce with intimidation and retaliation. So they not only do that to countries, they do it to companies, they do it to individuals. It, by the way, it's part of their okay. economic warcraft strategy. All right. How do you expect the Chinese to respond? Because they are talking about retaliating. They're calling this new effort, quote, a textbook case of bullying. The U.S., quote, has no right to set up the clean network. That's what the CCP is saying this morning. And they are promising retaliation. So what would you expect in that regard? Well, um, you know, they're, they're a bully. And when you confront a bully, they back down. And, and they really back down if you confront that bully and you have all your friends uh, around you. And, and, and by the way, it's about time we, we stood up to, the, to uh, the Communist Party. You saw when Boris Johnson about four months ago said, we're going to reconsider that Huawei decision. And you saw, you know, Beijing yeah. threaten HSBC. And, and, and you saw him, uh, the Chinese ambassador over there in the U.K., say, we're going to pull back that $100 billion uh, investment on that railway. And, President, uh, and, and Secretary Pompeo stood up and said, look, we, we stand with our allies. We're standing up to that China bully. We, uh, and so it's basically yeah. freedom against authoritarianism, Maria. Yeah, right. Well, that's what we're calling it here. We're calling it China versus the free world, because it does appear that much of the free world is aligning with the United States on this issue. Got to wonder, do you want a communist country, the dominant country in the world? I think most countries but, would say no. Undersecretary Keith Crack, it is good to have you this morning. We so appreciate your insight.